Picture this. You're sitting at home and your phone lights up. There's a flood advisory for your area. Feeling a sense of panic, you turn on the news where your local official is saying, prepare your homes for this one in 100 year event and be ready to evacuate. How would you react to this message? You knew it was flood season, but are you in the flood zone? What does it mean to have a one in 100 year event? And how do you prepare your household for a flood? If you're asking yourself these questions, you're not alone. These questions come up because this is an example of unclear risk communication. Given that climate change is causing an increase in extreme weather events, such as floods and wildfires across Alberta, it's becoming increasingly important that these risks are communicated effectively. Risk communication, a process during which people exchange information about risk, is an important mechanism for protecting people and property from danger in the face of increasing natural hazards. My work provides tangible strategies to ensure that you know how to prepare and respond during the next extreme weather event. My research used document analysis and literature reviews, which means I read, analyzed, and synthesized previous research in an effort to create risk communication policy recommendations for municipalities and communities. Through my research, I was able to identify three key areas that inform the creation of good policy and practice. The first area is risk communication theory which, laying the groundwork, helps us to understand what makes risk communication effective across different disciplines, such as psychology and communication sciences. The second area is risk communication strategies, which are best practices for risk communication, and tools, which are written, verbal, or visual statements containing information about risk. Both effective strategies and tools help us to ensure that messages are understood and the public is engaged. The third and final area is factors affecting risk communication. These factors help us to understand what influences the success or failure of risk communication efforts. This information can also inform how public officials and municipalities approach the risk communication process moving forward. Taken together, these three areas help us to understand what makes effective risk communication and ultimately allows the resulting policy recommendations to be rooted in academic research, case studies, and community experiences. As extreme weather events are amplified, research focused on building resilient communities, communities that can survive and thrive, both during and after a disaster event is becoming increasingly important. One step in building resilience to extreme weather events is ensuring that communities and individuals know how to prepare and respond in the face of these risks. If done effectively, risk communication has the ability to do just that. Thus, my research is important because by creating these policy options, hopefully when you see that next flood alert, you'll turn on your TV and you'll hear a message tailored to your local context, a context where participants are informed, Public officials are trusted and the process is fair and transparent.